Hello and welcome to the Talk Health online clinic series in collaboration with NHS Choices. My colleague is here today to talk to Dr Adam Fox of Guy's and St Thomas's NHS Foundation Trust about the myths and concerns surrounding hay fever. Is it safe to use antihistamines on a long-term basis? And if you give antihistamines too frequently, can it cause harm? Hay fever can have a really, really big impact on your quality of life throughout the spring and summer, and that's often underestimated, um, not just by, um, by patients, but also by their doctors as well sometimes. There are things that are very helpful. Um, one of the most useful things to do is um, allergen avoidance. Now, of course, that's very difficult. The pollen's um, out there and you've got to get on with your, your day-to-day um, activities. But simple measures like pollen filters in the car, wrap around sunglasses, um, even washing your hair before you go to bed so that any pollen that's collected on your hair isn't then rubbed onto your pillow so that you then rub your nose in it all night. All of those can make a bit of a difference. But for most people with significant hay fever, they're going to need medication of some sort. The first thing to try is an over-the-counter, non-sleepy, long-acting antihistamine, something like cetirizine, loratadine, fexofenadine, whilst avoiding the sedating antihistamines like chlorphenamine, which are often, unfortunately, inappropriately used for hay fever. They can actually make you feel worse. If the antihistamines aren't doing the job, then think about getting an over-the-counter nasal spray with a small amount of steroid in it. They're very safe and they're also very, very effective when they're used regularly, particularly if you start before the pollen season starts. If you're unlucky enough that despite being on the long-acting antihistamine and the nasal spray, you still have problematic symptoms, then that's, that's a good time to go and discuss with your doctor whether you'd be an appropriate person to have desensitization, or it's also known as immunotherapy, which is a treatment where we can make you less allergic to the pollen that's causing the problem in the first place and can really make a big difference. Can you start to treat your hay fever before the symptoms start and can this help? Most people tend to wait until their symptoms have become a real problem before they start their medication, when in fact it's probably more effective to start their medicine before the hay fever symptoms really, symptoms really start. Ideally, the nasal spray should be started three to four weeks before the pollen season is expected, and that will make a real difference to how well your season goes. Once the symptoms start to break through despite the nasal spray, then you can start taking the antihistamines as well. Can sinus problems and hay fever be linked? Hay fever and sinus problems are very closely related. If hay fever is causing the upper part of your airway to become very inflamed, then that will eventually, if it gets bad enough, block the drainage pipes that allow the mucus to come out of your sinuses. And if the mucus that's sat in there becomes infected, that can become very painful and problematic. So if you find that your hay fever develops into painful headaches, um, tenderness over your sinuses, or a feeling of chronic lethargy and feeling really, really grotty and unwell, then it's a good idea to have a chat with your doctor about appropriate treatments. Can babies have hay fever or are they too young? Usually we don't see hay fever developing until um, teenage years or sometimes a little bit older, but over the last few years we've noticed that the age at which people's symptoms start seem to be getting younger and younger. And in fact we now see a fair number of young children with problematic hay fever. However, it does take some time, usually a few seasons of exposure from your immune system to the pollens or, or pet allergens or dust mites in the environment before they really become a problem. So it's extremely unusual to see genuine allergies to environmental allergens in very young children. We've had a number of questions asking what is the best way to use a nasal spray? Steroid nasal sprays are the most effective treatment that we have um, for um, problematic hay fever symptoms and um, lots of patients get a, an enormous amount of relief by using them. They can sometimes be a little bit problematic because if you start taking a nasal spray when your nose is already very inflamed and angry inside, then it can sometimes cause nose bleeding. If this is a problem, then starting with nose drops rather than a spray sometimes helps. And trying to move the spray around a little bit each time you use it so it's not always spraying onto the same part of the lining of your nose can also help. However, it's worth bearing in mind that these treatments are very, very safe as well as being effective.